happening guys chris va travels and finally made it out to the western part of the state it's been a while i'm out here in staunton and going to visit the frontier culture museum a museum that showcases cultures and settlements from all over the world they've got west african villages european settlements so it should be pretty interesting and check this place out first thing we've got a sign over here the great indian warrior trading path the Great Philadelphia Wagon Road, the most heavily traveled road in Colonial America. And I always thought the King's Highway that led from Boston down to Charleston, South Carolina. I thought that was the biggest road at the time, but yeah, this is a pretty big one. And uh, it looks like it linked areas from the Great Lakes to Augusta, Georgia. Wow, okay. Over here looks just like uh, some donors over here. All right, yeah. And it looks like up here is where you get your ticket. First, let me check out this sign. It's a pretty big area. Like I say, a lot to see. Places from all over the world. And over here, you've got an American settlement, farm, schoolhouse, farm from the 1850s. Uh, maybe a little Native American set up right there. West Africa, England, Ireland, Germany. And yeah, let me grab my ticket. And they're open from nine until five daily. Right up over here about the Great Wilderness Road, Virginia's heritage migration route. You'll see it cuts up through the valley and pretty much Interstate 81. <laughs> and here we are, Staunton, Virginia, Augusta County. And the Great Road is one of six sections that comprise the Wilderness Road. The Valley of Virginia has been occupied for 10,000 years since the glaciers retreated, so since the end of the last ice age. Settlers in the 1830s blazed new routes and used existing paths, Native American trails. And uh, European immigrants, particularly the Swiss, German, Scots-Irish, uh, poured into Virginia, North Carolina. So yeah, place should uh, definitely be interesting. West Africa, Iowa. Just got my ticket, and they've got a little video you can watch. Tickets are $12, and they also rent golf carts. They're $25. I considered it's going to be 97 degrees today, and like I say, this place is pretty big, but they do have shuttles taking you from spot to spot, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, kind of wing it, and I brought plenty of water, so hopefully, yeah, I'll be okay. And they give you a little uh, pamphlet. It's got a map on one side and it's got a little write up about each little kind of display, each little settlement. And I think it begins over here to the right, but let me walk up and see what this says. Same map we saw before. And it talks about how the museum is divided into two sections, Old World and America. Old World exhibits, uh, they explore rural life in Western Europe and West Africa. And we've got a map here, a chart of the migration. Obviously, the English were the first to arrive. Uh, the Irish, uh, which the Scots-Irish, who were originally from Scotland, they were moved to North Ireland, Ulster, and they lived there for about 100 years and they saw more opportunities, so they came to America. Uh, all the good land was settled along the Tidewater area, so they kind of settled in the Appalachians. Uh, I guess your hillbilly typ typically uh, is kind of from Scots-Irish uh, descent. And of course, uh, the West Africans uh, brought over for the slave trade. Okay, and I think down here is the first. Let me see. Okay, so yeah, the African, it looks like, village is going to be over there. So. Yeah, there's a little bit of walking. If you're older, you probably would want to rent the golf cart or uh, wait for that shuttle. Yeah, but I, I don't want to wait around, so. Uh, okay, a little place to hang out, catch some uh, shade. All right, so West African village circa 1700s. Whoops, let me check this out. And yeah, the Ivory Coast down there, the Gold Coast. So this is a village in Igbo land. See a bunch of people working. Uh, you see he's making something. 
and these people sitting around conversing. All right, and Igbo households consisted of husbands, his wife, children, and sometimes other dependents. And here's Igbo land right here. So right off the Calabar coast. Pretty cool, all right. Let me walk over, there's actually somebody over there. Didn't realize. All right, she's working on some gourds, uh, making the base of a banjo, some uh, cooking instruments, bowls, pretty neat. Thanks, all right, so over there, some traditional African uh, plants being grown, black-eyed peas. Over here, we've got some banana plants. But you can play different rhythms to mean different things. We don't really have any of the traditional rhythms because the language is lost. But what we do have is one rhythm that we play as a joke. It just means visitors are coming. All right, over here we've got a timber-framed house, obviously uh, European. Oh, check out the design on, on the chimney. And we're under uh, the sycamore tree over here. Okay, first let me read the write-up. Yeah, England, 1650s. Yeah, an English yeoman farm. And this is original, it was brought over here and originally stood in Worcestershire in the West Midlands, built, uh, of course, uh, mid 17th century for a yeoman family. And yeomans were brought over here. They became indentured servants. And you see this guy pulling his horse and cart. And I would recommend this guy setting the basket on the cart. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, they came over here for opportunity here we are, Worcestershire, right in the Midlands there. And walk up, take a look at this thing. Okay, so it says 1692 right up there. Pretty neat. And looks like you've got the leaded glass, the windows. Again, looks like you've got three flues in that, uh, I guess one for each side and one for the upstairs. I guess there's gonna be a fireplace. Let me just walk around first before going in. And yeah, the yeomans, they when it came over uh, where they were indentured servants. Yeah, some people think indentured servants were slaves. They weren't. They were poor Europeans. Uh, it wasn't a good position to be in, but uh, their passage was prepaid basically uh, by a rich guy. <laughs> so they would come over, work off their indenture. It was usually five to seven years, somewhere like that. And once they worked it off, they were normally awarded 50 acres. Uh, yeah, to become their homestead. Back here, let me just take a quick walk through the little garden. Bunch of butterflies. They like what's over here. And I don't see any sticks in the ground telling what these are. But, oh, they smell nice. Strong smell to them. Okay, cool. All right. Let me uh, go inside, check this place out. Oh, have an apple tree over here. They do some uh, wood cutting over here, some woodwork, maybe making rails to a fence, it looks like. Here we go. Oh, huge hearth on this thing. And check out a little beehive oven kind of to this side. And you can't really make out that back. And yeah, you can tell they had a fire recently. Cool. Whoops. 
Uh, all right, check out this chair. Pretty cool carvings. And some pewter over here. Stein. Like when you get these thunderstorms for 30 minutes, I mean, that's a lot. Cool, and check out how these things are jointed. We could use, everybody could use about three days of rain. That's the way we are. Our area is in a drought situation. Same as you all here. All right, so back here. Okay, I see a press. It's kind of a, a working area. And maybe some flax down there. Oh wow, check out those mallets. And kind of a working area. A couple of hogs heads. Big old press back there. And look how low the ceiling is. It almost looks like there was a fire at one time. Yeah, it has kind of a charred, ashy smell. And bedroom over here, you've got your rope bed. As you guys know, sleep tight. That's where the term came from. There's the key right there to tighten the ropes. And check out the engravings. Some pewter over here. Check out this chair. Ladder back, kind of a tall chair a little bit. Yeah, chimney over here. And these cabinets probably weren't original. Oh, yeah, check out the inlay. All right, neat. Pond back there. And one last look at the yeoman's house. Over here, we've got the Liberty Tree. It's in celebration of the 250th anniversary of the city of Staunton. And it's also in remembrance of the Scottish prisoners who were taken at the Battle of Worcester in 1651 during the English Civil War. And those prisoners were sent over here to the colonies. So over here, there's a forge and Ireland, but I'm not sure if this is anything to look at or not. Maybe just horse stables, but let me walk over real quick. There might be some horses in there, something to look at. All right, kind of a composite uh, wall there stone and brick and oh there's a big uh kind of bull back here check this guy out all right yeah he's definitely enjoying that shade cool big steer and yeah just thought maybe there's something might be roaming around in here but nothing okay i'm headed to ireland and luckily there's a bit of uh shade on this trail big old pond over here okay all right so a bunch up here to the right but let me see what this house is okay good we have a sign over here keep off the coal ireland in the 1750s and this is a ulster's blacksmith shop and it looks like normally there's somebody here. A sign says they're, they'll be back at 12.15. Okay. So, yeah, like I say, oh, well, there's the coal. Let me uh, stick the camera in here. All right, so here it is, the forge. And you can see the blower back there. All the tools laid out. And pretty, pretty neat. Some handmade nails cool all right and that was a blacksmith shop over here kind of in Ulster village you'll see dove coats over here and yeah they would eat dove back then I mean some people still do but um, I don't see an animal in there unless he's hiding around the corner let me uh, walk over in Ireland in the 1750s. Yeah, this is an Ulster tenant farm, stone house, long byre barn. The stone houses at this exhibit were built near the town of Drumquin in County Trone in North Ireland. So are these original? I thought I saw when I was researching this place that some of these were brought over here. 
just like that first uh, timber house I saw. But yeah, ulsters in, in the English colony. I, I'll let you uh, pause and read. But yeah, it was a uh, British colony, which is now North Ireland. And the king was trying to fill it with Protestants from Wales, England, and Scotland. They had originally, most had come from Southern Scotland, kind of right on the border, and they spent centuries always battling the English. So they were kind of hardened people, lived off the land. And they came over here and settled mostly the frontier, kind of in the mountains. So like I say, your traditional what kind of hillbilly or redneck or whatever would, would probably have Scots-Irish uh, ancestry. Like I say, all the good land was already taken up. So they came out this way. And here it is, North Ireland, Ulster. But like I say, they originally came from Southern Scotland. Then they went over to Ulster. They were there for about a hundred years until there were food shortages. shortages. Boom, shot over here. And all right, let me dig in here. Okay, whoa. So, kind of little garden over here. And yeah, another stone house. And let me first walk in here. Okay. And just kind of store wood, it looks like. Kind of a waddle and daub type job and again you see how those are jointed the little wood little uh, pegs holding it together all right oh cool okay and yeah they were big on growing flax made linen There you go. Hi. Hi. Hey. But uh, we have a barn, so which are called buyers. So the room that's attached to the end of the house on this side um, is called a wee buyer, which just means small barn. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, a, a barn that runs perpendicular to the house on this end. Um, it is called a long buyer, which means long barn. And turf, which you would cut from a peat bog, you would have peat digging rights written in your lease. Um, the, the room that we usually keep locked would have been for storing the peat. We have a cart shed, yeah. stone. Okay, yeah, that was pretty neat. And a couple, another building to check out. And yeah, this is actually sandstone, kind of filled in with rubble, uh, rubble, and then whitewashed, obviously and a side roof pretty heavy with these reeds and yeah pretty neat so flax was the big thing in ulster it was one of the few things they were allowed to export so yeah you'll see a flax brush back there old wheelbarrow and let me see what's over there some sort of animal but uh Cool, neat little bridge down there. Oh, uh, there's a cat down there. <laughs> and I imagine they sometimes have some animals maybe grazing out here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not too much in there, just another little wheelbarrow. And just some, uh, some flax. Cool. All right, so we are headed into a German settlement, another timber framed house. And kind of reminds me of when I was in Old Salem, Moravian settlement down there in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Okay. Oh, there's several houses, all right. Yeah, check these out. You see filled in with clay. And this might be the last of the European villages and then we're gonna be headed to America. All right, so Germany, 19, uh, 1750s, I'm sorry. This is a German peasant farm. And one barn originally stood in the village of Hort in the Rhineland Palatinate. 
And these three buildings are typical architectural forms for 18th century farming villages in Southwest Germany. And the Palatinate was part of the Holy Roman Empire, which famously isn't holy, isn't Roman, and wasn't an empire. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, yeah, the main port of entry for Germans was in Philadelphia. Let me uh, get out of their way so they can read the sign. So, all right, we'll come check this out. And here in Virginia, the first German settlement was in Germana, out there in Orange County. Alexander Spotswood had it set up. And he had it set up to, uh, to, to build some iron furnaces out there. Okay, so yeah, just uh, timber frame uh, filled with clay, as I had said. And let me walk in here. Might have an animal or something, maybe. Yeah, waddle and dob type of. Huh. Okay. And. Uh, oh, all right. So, we've got three levels. And again, you see how they're jointed, the pegs right there. Didn't have nails. Um, the doors, it says do not enter, so. Okay, you see a big, couple of big studs going through. And yeah, little garden there to the left. Okay, all right, so we can go inside. This like, looks like it would be kind of the main house. Oh, to find out what this, is there a well in there or is that maybe some sort of little, wouldn't be an ice house, um, probably a well. But the nice thing to have to farm all the time. Uh that is their main source of income is the main thing Oh, check out these chairs. Pretty cool backs on those. Pretty cool stein up here. Obviously German. And what is this? Some uh Chinese checkers or German checkers? Oh, check out this trunk. Yeah, I bet you it was fun lifting that thing. All right, their bed over here. Another cool trunk right there. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat. Just be careful not to touch his belly. A lot of cats around here. And look at this little door they've got hidden behind this. Uh, that's probably a stair stairway. Cool. Pretty cool lock latch. Oh, here we go. The kitchen. Yeah, it's amazing how much cooler it is. In here. <laughs> All right, I guess do some laundry over there as well. Dry it out. All right, let's see what's in this last room. Oh, and check out these clods. Pretty neat. It's so cool in there. It's a cave. Yeah. It's got two to three feet of rock for its walls. <laughs> Uh, I was surprised when I, when I went in, in the how winter. cold it was. In the winter? Uh, that's check out this colonial oh, really? it keep British jacket. Oh, wow. uh, because it it's keep it limestone. The okay. Let me walk back. Get a shot of this thing. Uh, nice breeze blowing in. All right, so it's getting crowded. And we are headed to the Americas, it looks like. Oh, cool, yeah, they've got some water set out, so that's good. Uh, 
The other 10 tribes are all down in uh, the Tidewater area, east of the fall. Pottery making studio, this is a tool making area, and this is where you're going to be. These people have more free time than any other farm you're going to see because they have a division of labor between them and them. The guide over there is part of the Monacan Indian Nation, and he's a Monacan descendant. You can tell by his facial features. But uh, yeah, over here, we've got an American Indian of the Mohawk Nation up there in New York. Her little papoose back there, the baby on the back. And yeah, a lot of people think uh, Jamestown is the oldest. Uh, it's the old, Jamestown is the oldest English settlement, but the oldest European still active settlement is St. Augustine by the Spanish. 1565 and yeah just talking about a lot about the uh the fur trade let me uh come over here and check out these i don't know what they call these long houses they're not your traditional long house but it says do not enter and let me stick obviously bark covering this thing quiver with some arrows, some furs. Okay, a fire going in the middle there. Yeah, there's a hole in the roof. And then a bed over here. Cool. And this gourd has some feathers in it. I don't know what's going on there. And I don't know what this is, if they had a dream catcher originally. Pretty neat. Okay, a bunch of furs. Looks like they would sit around, have a powwow in here, maybe. I don't know why there's a mirror right there, but let me head on to the next one. There's a couple of plaques down there. I'm gonna, uh, gonna read those. And then over here, I can see there's your traditional canoe. They would uh, take fallen trees, kind of dig out the center, burn them, and they would use them for canoes. So here you go, there's another back there. Yeah, the one across the street is uh, is burned out. Yeah, so the dome structures over there were wigwams. And here is a hypothetical sketch of a stockaded town around 1400 in present day Bath County which is the uh, far western part of the state. And over here, the indigenous cultures of Appalachia. And here we are in Virginia, the Monacan. And then you would have the Palatin, of course, right here, all Algonquin. And up there in New, in New York, of course, the Iroquois, the Mohawk. Yeah. Okay, all right. Head on to the next one. And it looks like we've got 1760 ahead. And there's a lot of people out now. All right, so there's an interpreter down there. Over here, we've got hemp at the Frontier Cultural Museum. The field in front of you planted is planted with hemp. The one, one of the most vital cash crops of the Valley of Virginia. All right. Valley of Virginia in the 1760s. And I see the Shenandoah right here in yellow. All of the red is settled British territory. And okay, so just talking about, this is a uh, typical farm on the Virginia frontier. One room log cabin. Okay, here he is, Alexander Spotswood, namesake of Spotsylvania County. And he led the Knights of the Golden Horseshoe, an expedition they explored, charted out, mapped the western part of Virginia. And he also started up Germana, the first English settlement out there in Orange County, which at the time was the frontier. I believe that would have been 1714. I've got a video on that if you want to learn more about it. And uh, yeah, they started up, I think I said earlier, yeah, some iron furnaces. Okay, so he's giving some sort of military demonstration. Let me walk over here. Mark. 
Up out. Face. And up out. Face. No, the other way. <laughs> okay. You went the wrong way, boy. <laughs> so what would have happened is when you got spun, you would have taken their guns and your guns. Why don't we just take a quick walk around? We don't want that. Alright, so we've got a bed over here. Probably filled with this hay. Okay, some tools. More gourds. And yeah, so this is a typical cabin on the frontier. Okay, you see GR stands for King George. Uh, you know, you've got the good stuff in that little port barrel. Oh, uh, they've got guns now. <laughs> Pretty neat. All right, let me uh, read this plaque and uh, I'll keep on moving. Yeah, Virginia in the 1760s. Okay, you had English Quakers out here. And this, uh, the Indian giving a talk to Colonel Bouquet. Pretty good drawing right there. And over here, frontiersmen, maybe doing some hunting. All right, so it looks like normally they have some uh, animals. Bunch of barns over here, pretty big settlement in this area. Um, let me walk up here. All right, so looking like we probably have some chickens over here. Okay, yes, I hear them. All right, let me see. Oh, here they are down there, catching, catching some shade. All right, let me walk up to this big barn, or is, can you get to it from the other side, maybe? I think, I don't know if this wraps around. I don't know, but. Okay, so we have a little garden over here. Another uh, timber frame house on a stone foundation, kind of dovetail dovetailed on the uh, ends here. What is this little, I don't know, but all right, they might have this one open. I've got a little stove out here, making some bread. Cool, a couple stone chimneys. Okay, I see somebody in there. Check out this rake. <laughs> Cool, all right, so we're walking into 1773. And this thing is original. Let's move down here and check out the hearth. Okay, you can see, uh, does that say 1767 on that back? Browse around here. I've got cabinets over here. Some peppercorn, cinnamon. Oh yeah, flax everywhere. Oh, there's no clock in there. <laughs> American history, it says. Yeah, old floors. Oh, check out the stove over here. Didn't see that. That's pretty neat. Okay, yeah, the bedroom tucked back here, another rope bed. Okay. 
little baby cradle over here spinning wheels all over the place and yeah just check out this trunk mm, you worry about that stove being on the uh on the wood floor and let me check out the uh oh yeah and this fireplace too right on the uh little embers fall out on that and that's uh that's bad news all right, so over here, we're walking into the 1820s. All right, it's our writing desk. Oh yeah, sampler. All right, that was neat. Let me walk around the village over there. You can see my energy is starting to zap. <laughs> Further into the hot day we get, schoolhouse, 1840s, and uh, log schoolhouse. I know public education started up in the 1840s in Virginia, so this originally stood in Rockingham County. Rural families started schools like the Schuler School to provide their children with a basic, with basic education. Oh, check it out. Big old stove in there, African American school, 27, yeah. uh, enrolled 12, attendance 7, teacher expected 19 to be enrolled after work is over. Okay. All right, we've got a tinsmith shop over here. Closed up at the moment. Oh, well, I can stick my camera in here. And on the pamphlet pamphlet they gave me, the uh, candle makers, just uh, some little birds uh, back there. Yeah, on the pamphlet they gave me, there are different people at different times of the day uh, who are going to be at these displays. So there might be somebody here later on. And let me just walk over and check out the schoolhouse. All right, so yeah, typical uh, stove feeding into this big chimney here. Old map. And you'll see a couple little chalkboards, a uh, big old Windsor chair. Cool, all right, there's an old uh, schoolhouse. All right, let me cut over and check out this house. And it looks like maybe that was a smokehouse to the right, but we'll we'll find out here. Valley of Virginia, 1850s. All right, so slowly getting more modern and modern. The farm was originally built by descendants of German immigrants in Botetot County. That's how that's pronounced. A log house built in the 1830s, numerous outbuildings, a grain and livestock barn, and a tobacco barn. Okay, here's the James River. James River Canal near the mouth of the North River. Oh, check this out. Lewis Miller, Pennsylvania folk artist, uh, sketched this slave coffle uh, on the march uh, from South Virginia to Tennessee. Okay. Uh, I see some pellets on the ground. All right, what's in here? Okay. All right, just some pottery and, and whatnot.
Okay, just another closed up barn over there, but let me see what's inside this wood framed house with the big stone chimney. All right, so normally there's an interpreter in here. Like I say, it says they'll be back at 1.15. It's 12.30 right now, so yeah. I'm gonna miss out, but old checkerboard. All right. And if you hear the term blue plate special, that's where this comes from. This isn't Blue Willow, but it was so overproduced. It, it, was a, it was a special thing in the late 1700s, but eventually became so over, overproduced. It, uh, it was associated with a poor man's meal. And that's why at a lot of restaurants nowadays, you'll have the blue plate kind of cheaper special. Okay, I've got this place to myself, so that's cool. Oh, this is Blue Willow right here. When you see the two birds, that sells it in that kind of gazebo looking thing. And then on that bridge right there, two lovers. Uh, and there's a story associated with that and it, it might be made up, but those two people down there are lovers and the girl's father is upset with them. Supposedly he kills them and their spirit uh, becomes those birds flying away. I don't know if that's a bunch of malarkey, but <laughs> that's a story I've heard. So. So we're gonna have a bedroom back here. It looks like, oh, that's kind of a decent bed. Another rope bed. Kind of a standard dresser. And there's your little wash basin pitcher down there. So, and one last room over here. Let me see. Oh, is there an upstairs? There's no sign saying you can't come up here. And pretty steep stairs. Okay, yeah. I'm glad I snuck over here. Oh, I bet you this might be slave quarters. When you see the mattress on the ground, a lot of times that's what that is. Although there's a sled right here. Mm -mm. A couple more rope beds. Now, this might be a children's room. Little kind of sort of trundle bed down here where the children slept. All right, and then you've got another up, upper level right there, it looks like. Yeah, we're kind of on high grounds. There's a nice breeze blowing through, but I'll just browse around these barns check them out i might maybe catch some livestock possibly oh and actually a pretty good view right here okay so real quick i'll just take a look at this uh this cart over here and giant hogs head over here kind of a short fat one kind of wrapped up with these uh kind of vine thick vine uh wrapped around it and 81 is backed up it looks like and that might be where you merge onto 64 possibly uh we're right in that area all right so nothing in there maybe some tobacco drying yeah okay well just a barn so and i think the last thing on the list uh this is going to be a church so We'll go check that out. I don't want to bore you guys with barns, but I'm just going to walk over here real fast. Well, I'm guessing pigs at one time were in here. Let me just stick my nose in here. And whoa. 
Watch your step right there. All right, let's see what this is. This is a McCormick Reaper. So the machine is a replica of Cyrus McCormick's 1831 Reaper, a horse-drawn machine used to harvest wheat that lar largely replaced harvesting by hand. About 300 of these replicas were made. Oh yeah, let me show you the picture of it uh, in use right here. Yeah. And the factory over here, Cyrus's father, Robert McCormick, he was a farmer from Rockbridge County. Yeah, pretty bustling plant right there. Okay, yeah, you see the belt right here? Well, that's pretty neat. Another one of these wrapped up barrels. Oh, there is a pig in here. Usually you smell them before you, oh my God, that's a fat one right there. God, just by himself. Yeah, you can hear him snorting too, I can smell them now. Ugh. Yeah, he's the only one I see unless there's one kind of laying down in that brush. As I walk around, I see a sheep over here. Yeah, his coat almost looks like it's a blanket on his body, his fur, his wool. Yeah, I think he sees me. Okay, and there's one on the other side of the fence, right beside him. Okay, and there's a couple more. So it looks like it's actually gonna be an African-American church, circa 1860, and then a little octagonal barn before we get back to the parking lot. And here it is. Go up and get a closer look. And a little golf cart station, it looks like. Wait and take you back, maybe. All right, I thought there might be a cross on it or something. Nothing really indicating it's a church, but I see little pews in there. And of course your stove right in the middle. The first African Baptist church was found here, was founded here by free and enslaved African Americans in Richmond, Virginia, 1841. All right, so Mount Tabor United Methodist Church. This large church was built near New Hope, Virginia by an African American congregation. Okay, let me stick my head in here. Okay, yeah, so. All right, cool, well, just a small little church. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap it up for the Frontier Culture Museum. I enjoyed it, Ticket was only $12. And yeah, unless you have a lot of children or you're elderly, you probably don't have to rent a golf cart. They are pretty timely on kind of buzzing around, uh, picking you up. That last stop I called and they're there within two minutes. So anyway, gonna get out of here. As always, like and subscribe. See you guys.